Hello and welcome to GT Rail Fan Productions. And here we are back again with the podcast series Steam Smoke Talk, Episode 2. And I have C. Henderson Rail Productions or Christian on here. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> wow, that was enthusiastic. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make sure to subscribe to um, him. He's got good content. You guys, you you guys saw if you saw the first episode, you this is familiar to you. And if you didn't subscribe, did. you should because this man has a bunch of good stuff. I mean, he just uploaded Strasburg '89 pulling trains on the Strasburg Railroad in January. I mean, some good stuff. For the first there. time in 25 years, and I just upgraded to 4K. So. Yes, that Thanks I was happy for. Yeah, I was happy for you when you were like. I'm upgrading to 4K and I, I'm like, I probably made things a little bit complicating, complicated trying to explain it to you how it works, but I'm glad you finally got to that stage where you're like, I'm 4K now. I should have done it two years ago, but I mean, hey. Hey, we all learn, you know, it's, you got the footage at least, you know. Obviously, we always yeah. strive for the best of quality, but sometimes it's better to just have the video than not one at all. But um, our first topic of the day recently, I think this, I think it's been this past week was when it got, or maybe it was it the week before that this uh, Grand Trunk and Western uh, number fifty thirty was being sold to a preservation group in Pennsylvania. Is that correct? Is it the Coke with the Boil or Doyle? <laughs> the cold... you say the name of the... <laughs> you say the name of the line. You just you just say it, and I'll disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh the Cold Brookdale uh railroad. Um, they're they're a small. Pr- I don't. I know they're located in eastern Pennsylvania. I don't know if it's southern yeah. or north. You know, it's right in the same area as literally. Strasburg, New Hope, and all that other fun stuff. Yeah, it's like it's just generally out in the area. Um, specifically Bowertown, Pennsylvania. That's where it is. It is. Yeah. And basically, what they're striving to do is they well, no, what they did is they purchased the steam locomotive Grand Trunk and Western fifty thirty for fifty thousand dollars from Jacks Jackson, Michigan. I believe it is. Yes, Jackson, Michigan. Yeah, I, the line, um, line to my, I don't really know too much about it, but I know a few friends who have shot there before. In fact, don't remember his name, but I know someone that I've ran into on the chase volunteers there. I believe they've got some small diesels, and I almost believe, too, either the Visco 6 or one of the Fly Coal engines, or one of Barney Grambling's engines visited there within the past five years. So there's not a line that hasn't seen steam. They just haven't had an engine of their own. And I think this, another Pacific, number one, another Pacific that's in restorations. I mean, there's the main central 470, which is definitely one that I don't feel gets that hyped up about dude, is I, being restored. Dude, that one, I've been, like, I've known about that one for, like, years, and I've been, like, not a lot of people talk about it, which is very true what you said. They, like, it's not hyped up as it should be. Yeah, it's, which to me is a bummer, but back to the Grand Trunk Western Pacific, I think this is great. This will probably be the first time since the 70s since the Grand Trunk Western Pacific has uh, fell a fire, and uh, hopefully uh, it doesn't turn into a tuna can or razors like her sister did. I, it's just that was inside. a comment. <laughs> You did. You were. You were right. You did have something in store that was going to be a uh, pretty funny or good. But yes, you are correct about the Cole Brookdale having um, a a small switcher steam locomotive on it. I think it was. Uh, it, it was, was Visco six, six. six. It was Visco it was six. six. Yes. Because I think Big Jim did some videos there um, when the six was there. I. There's so many videos out there, and it's hard when you're specifically trying to think of one to pull exactly which one you were thinking of. Because I know I saw the video. I don't really know too much about the line, but... I know Visco 6 visited that the Colebrookdale, and then there was the Storebridge line, which Visco 6, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the Flag Coal or, uh, you know, one of the Jetto Coal locomotives uh, visited there as well. But I know Visco yeah. 6 for sure visited the Storebridge line. I don't know about the other uh, 
what's his name? Barney, isn't it? Barney Grambling. Yeah, he's, Barney uh, Grambling. Sorry. Yes, he, the one that owns like multiple steam locomotives, small switchers. Um, I don't know. And he puts if... on the best show with twelve twenty five. But I think it's neat because you know, like the Pacific type locomotive. I mean, they were more for speed. They weren't really that powerful. Right. But they're more for quick passenger service, not the type of service you'd expect climbing or pulling 12 or pulling 20 coaches up the mountain and back cough cough 425 but they were known <laughs> for their speeds more than anything else and seriously i always thought the grand trunk western had some of the best looking pacifics out there i personally saw one when i was chasing 1225 a few years ago in duran michigan i think that's how you pronounce it and that is where 56 29 is kept which ironically as I made a joke about the unlucky uh, Grand Trunk Western engine, the CB&Q Golden 484 had the same number. In fact, when I showed a friend that engine, when we went up to attend the Laro Charter with 1225, he said to me, doesn't the number feel eerie to you? That's the same number as the Golden uh, 484 from the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy route. And I said, wow, I didn't even think of that. Wow, I didn't. I hope I got the number right. <laughs> yeah. I think you got it right. Don't kill us in the comments. Remember, you saw the disclaimer at the beginning, so we make mistakes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yes, that is uh, definitely what your friend said, that, that being eerie feelings. Like, yeah, definitely. that That's whack. Like, honestly, like having the same number as that golden uh, CB&Q lo steam locomotive. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And seeing how you know that the end with a... <laughs> yeah. Scrapper storage. Yeah, that that's just that it's sad what happened to that, but not everything can be saved sa like sadly. I mean, it just contributed to my razor blade so I can shave every day, but <laughs> <laughs> scrap all steam locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great, you know, like I mean, there's a locomotive that sat outside for years and it's finally getting a chance now. I don't know what the plan is. I don't really know anyone there. Not that I would ever say it in a podcast, but I'm pretty sure they've probably got an idea of what needs to be done. Hopefully they have a good crew, and it'll run when it runs, and I'm pretty sure it, well, not pretty sure. It'll be an awesome sight to see when it actually does run. Oh, yeah, I definitely think it'll be a nice, a wonderful sight to see another Pacific Steam locomotive back, especially a Grand Trunk one. I mean, we don't really, there's not really any examples of uh, Grand Trunk and Western Pacifics operating, you know? Like, it just doesn't, you don't come across those. I mean, the only one was the one that met the end in Blue Island. Oh, okay. Is that still operating to this day, or is that just... No, that, that, that was the one I made the joke about. That oh. was the one that got scrapped in the 80s. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that was uh, that, that's the one that everyone uh, always talks about. It was really I don't remember the full story, other than everyone literally tried to pitch it last time. It was 1988 when it was scrapped. Damn. So, I mean, that's where everyone literally gets annoyed. Um, I don't know the full story, but it ran. It was part of, uh, I believe it was Dick Jensen's locomotive. It ran on the CB&Q steam program, if I'm not mistaken, and it ran into the early 70s. Now, it sat in a roundhouse in Blue Island, Illinois, for the next 10, 15 years, however long it sat there. And basically, Metro said the locomotive had to be out. And it literally wasn't until the final hour that people were seriously trying to save the locomotive. Even the Illinois Railway Museum tried to step in and save the locomotive. And unfortunately, no one was able to do anything. They moved it out of the roundhouse, and they scrapped it within like a week or so. And I think really the only locomotive, I feel there's two left. The only locomotive I know of that really survived the CP&Q steam program is 4960. Yep. Because I believe they had two 484s. One was the golden one. That got scrapped. Um, there was that, which was owned by Dick Jensen. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, it's really a shame that, I mean, 
I feel there's another engine. I just can't remember the number, but it's really a shame when you think that 4960 is really the only example left from the CV and Q steam program, and it's now looks more to me like a combination between a first go and a southern engine. Which I like the current look. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I think it's definitely awesome what the Grand Canyon crews did, and actually, I'd love to go out there and chase it when you know it's safe again too. You're right. Right. Because right now I'm not flying. Yeah, so. definitely no. Mm -mm. But Grand Trunk Western Pacific operating in Pennsylvania, that will definitely be awesome. Oh yeah, definitely. The number actually of the gold one, if I'm reading this correctly, I think it is actually 5632. Yeah, because it was the same number as the uh, engine in Durand. Yeah. So. so, yes, it was 5632. But, yeah, that's, yeah. that's great news for the Cole Brookdale. I mean, I knew of the railroad because they have – they just started up no, not too long ago. I mean – they're relatively new within the decade for sure and um well not this decade the 2020s but last decade 2010s um they were relatively in, started up in the later you know part of the decade and they just ran small excursions i don't know all i read was bowerstown pennsylvania i don't know how long their line is and stuff like that but I'm sure it's going to be interesting to see it when it is actually operating on that line. And I believe it said it's going to take the minimum amount of years from what I read was five years. Again, minimum. That means, you know, was it could be longer. Was there five years to move it from Jackson, Michigan to um, PA? I think that's what it said. Oh, it may, that might have been it. I thought it, I read it. Um, yeah, know, that, that's probably going to be a fun locomotive if they're going to have a fun time with uh, tearing that one apart for how long it's been sitting outside. Oh yeah, definitely. It must be good Um, it must be like when they did the ultrasound tests and stuff, it must be a good candidate it's just obviously the deterioration on the outside of it is just you know, it's like old oh, when you look at it. Yeah. I mean, you think right now you have I'm sure I'm probably forgetting you have 425 operational, 3415, which has been on my bucket list forever, and yep. you've got 148, and I'm sure, oh, I'm trying to think right now, oh, technically it is still operational, hasn't operated in a few years, but the Southern Pacific 2472, which is another bucket list locomotive I'd love to see, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Because I believe this was the year it was supposed to go down for its 1472 day. Oh, and rip. Yeah, that was the one that uh, Golden Gate Railroad Museum owned. So. Yeah, that that one was definitely one I wanted to see. Like I, just that's one of, I would say definitely one of my favorites up there because it's just something I watched as a kid. I'm like, ooh, I love the whistle on it. It looks aesthetically pleasing, but really nice, you know, and different. Yeah. And you know it then i found out it was on the golden gate and that's where it ran and stuff and then like out of the blue in like 2015 or something it was just like oh we're moving it or this railroad yeah. is like ceasing operations or whatever the case was and then we haven't heard much about it after it just moved within the past year um railroad didn't cease operations there uh they found a better opportunity is my understanding i don't know the full story but they moved from Niles Canyon to somewhere north of there, and they just towed the locomotive within the past year. It's in a yard now, and I, I, I mean, personally, it'd be cool to see it operate before it goes down for its 1472 day, but I believe a five-year inspection has to be performed on it. Yeah. And I just don't know what work has been and what hasn't been done. Pretty... I mean, pre the whole COVID situation, and I just know it was moved. So, right, the reality of it um, operating before it's fourteen seventy two is probably not likely, just because of the fact that it just recently moved within the year, probably. Like I think you said that, and um, last year, last year, yeah, and then now they have to get it all ready with the one, the what limited time of a year maybe left to get it running and you know what I mean like it just 
yeah. at this rate they probably would it would just be wise to put it under for its 1472 it will be interesting yeah so. i i would i just hope they get it all figured out and they actually get it back and running that's you know because that's a nice steam locomotive and it would be a shame um you know if they couldn't you know get it back and running for whatever reason yeah that's i like, agree it was uh it was neat. I love the uh, Southern Pacific Six chime on it. I mean, you ever see it in the videos of the Nile Canyon? It always seemed like it put on a show. I would have loved to have seen it in Nile Canyon. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I would have loved to see that. Hopefully, everything goes well with it too. It just same with like um, the other Southern Pacific steamer that I don't know if you know of it. I'm sure you know of it or have heard of it, <laughs> but I'm not sure. But uh, Southern Pacific Seven Forty Five. Yeah. That's the one down in uh, Louisiana. Yeah, that one New also Orleans. is one. Of, that one is a very nice steam locomotive. Definitely one of my favorites because of just the the videos you saw of it in the early two thousands of it on the KCS. Oh, yes. I just found that amazing. Like the way they ran it and the two whistles on it, just like that won me over. Like that high pitched screaming whistle. Even though how some people might find that annoying, I found found that whistle pretty cool. And then, then, I think mean, that's a Southern Pacific five chime, the desert one. Yeah, and then you then you have their the regular six chime on it, the SP one. Well, this five chime is a screeching one. The uh, deep tone one was the six chime. Okay, well both of those together on that locomotive made it very unique and very cool, in my opinion. Sadly, yeah. today, like currently, like the past few years before it actually, I think last year it went under for its 1472 day, if I'm not mistaken. Two years ago. Two, two years ago. Two years ago. The last passenger excursions they operated was their Polar Express, and they wanted to do a freight excursion. And I don't remember what happened, but they were going to do this freight run. Yeah. That, that they had permission yep. from the host railroad, and... They didn't, the timetable didn't work out, whatever, because, it, I mean, it's a freight train. And they can't just schedule it to run. Right. Um, the railroad timetables, all that fun stuff, whatever happened, they weren't able to make it, and they just started in the locomotive apart in 2019. So. Right. Actually, and, uh, from a train guy got a video from the Polar Express in 2018, which was pretty good. Yeah. Actually, from what I read on it, I actually was looking at it the other day. I don't know why. I just was watching videos of it the other day. I'm like, what? whatever happened to that freight run, you know? So I, I deep-dived a little bit, and from what I read was it actually was going to happen. Um, they had the okay and everything from the, the railroad, the short line, and yeah. what ended up happening was they were ready to go. They were going to go, and apparently the host railroad that had to get them to that short line couldn't get them there for whatever i think it was either it, it, from what it sounded like it was just too traffic heavy with w what was going on that day that they had to get them over there but i don't know it, it could have been other reasons but what basically what happened was the transfer from them moving from where the locomotive is stationed at to the short line to run the grain train or whatever freight train it was going to pull they couldn't do it because of the railroad that they had to get on to to get to it gotcha. now, so i believe it was a class one that they had to get on to get to that railroad but i don't know what the case was but it, it's kind of a shame that it didn't happen before it went under but let's just hope what that it comes back see. what was that it would have been neat to see oh yeah i was actually wanting to go see that but the problem with that was it literally like the day before was like okay we're doing it and no offense but nobody can just like go at you know like they can just go you know what i mean well like, that's you, the railroad i know that's the railroad but for an event like that, typically people are going to want uh, a date put on the calendar, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way, especially if a steam locomotive is pulling freight. <laughs> That's the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. But, yeah, um, it's going to be cool to see that uh, 462 in PA. So. Right. Definitely. I mean... PA's got a lot of steam locomotives down there. I mean, it's just another one that will get added down there. I just can't wait to see. 
I mean, that'll be neat. I just can't wait to see that run again. I mean, that's definitely now on another of uh, another one of my. Yeah, I don't want to say it. Another. It's another restoration I'm looking forward to. Indeed, indeed. Another restoration, or uh, I guess revival of steam, or a railroad that has steam that's going to be coming back is the East Broadtop Railroad. Now, yes. there's been a lot of talk about that. I mean, I believe it was 2019 when this was when it, it was last year. It was last because... year. But uh, that was last year. Now, yeah, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was during. What I guess during COVID or just before it. It was like, wasn't it like in the beginning of the year? When East, it. I feel it was March. Because I remember hearing the news for it, and I think they got to, or maybe it was April. Yeah, I can't remember they, exactly. But the amount of progress was, they've made is insane, for sure. Yeah, and the fact that one of the locomotives they're working on right now hasn't ran since the 50s there. I mean, they've called it the Durango and Silverton and the Cumbres and Toltec of the East. Oh, yeah. Basically, in a nutshell, it's kind of almost like Nevada Northern. I mean, the one, I don't know too much about the Nevada Northern line. It's definitely a line I'd love to go off for one of their whale, winter, one of their winter photo specials. But basically, the Nevada Northern was basically, when the railroad left, they pretty much left and left everything there. Yep. The three steam locomotives, the diesels, to my understanding, pretty much everything at the Nevada Northern is actually original, to my knowledge. And the same goes for the East Broadtop. It basically yep. went from a working line to a famous tourist line. Yep. It's definitely really yeah. cool. And it shut down within a year, I think it was 2011, is yes. when it shut down, 2010, 2011. It was late 20, it, it, I believe it was late 2011, because I think the last excursions were either summer 2010 or summer 2011, if I'm not mistaken. It's very, very cool. I just find I it mean, fascinating the amount of uh, different, like they have multiple steam locomotives, okay, and... It's just crazy to see the different, like, character of each steam locomotive and the way the railroad just, they put on, they put on, it's like Tweetsie Railroad, okay? Tweetsie Railroad is smaller, it's not your big, typical, narrow-gauge railroad, okay? But they still, with what they have, is they put on a show and it's still your little, like, tourist line, you know? Yeah, um, I don't really know how big the line is, how much trackage they have, but... I know they've been working on restoring track, and I know they used to do a lot of specials there. I believe Laro Productions, right before it shut down, actually did a photo, photo special at the East Broadtop Railroad. I know they were known for their fall spectacular, and right now, if anyone's checked Laro Productions' website, he's got something up for East Broadtop again, and I don't know what the timetable is. They're restoring two of the locomotives, Number 14 number and number 16. 16. Thank you. And one of them hasn't ran since the 50s, so that'll be really cool to see the one that hasn't ran since the 50s. I think back. it's 16 that hasn't run since... I don't know for sure. I believe it's 16, if I'm not mistaken, that hasn't run since I, the 50s. Now, I'm going to be real. I knew of the East Broad Top Railroad. I know everyone hypes it up. I actually really have never put that much research into it. I'm glad it's coming back. It's another thing in the late 2010 Steam Revival, and I can't wait to go and visit the line, but, you know, beforehand, I never really looked into it. I remember they did tours in that. I remember, like, once a year, the one group there, Friends of the East Broadtop, they would do tours, and they'd do a few other things, but they never, you know, fired up any of the steam locomotives they had because of the fact they weren't allowed to run or however that worked out. Which is what's so great about this is now they are running excursions again, even though it's with narrow gauge diesels. I mean, it's great to see the progress that's happened since last spring with the East Broadtop, and I just can't wait to see them make a full comeback. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's I think it's going to be very awesome. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe 16 was the first candidate for... 
they were like, we want this one to run because it hasn't run since the 50s. You know, we want it, we want it to run. And then 14, I think, was chosen because it was... I think it was the, la the last operating one. Um, like, when it shut down in 2010 or 2011. Like, I think 14 was the only one still running, if I'm not mistaken. And I also think 14 was the one that actually still had time. Yes. Right? thing was announced it still technically had time because i remember one of them one of the people was talking that if they did a five year on it the five year inspection it could have in theory ran again right but i mean probably just i think it's actually better at this point to just rip it apart get the 1472 day out of the way and then that way then you know you have steam again there yes sir i i think what makes it like really cool like the revival of it is that number 16 that just hasn't run since the 50s or 60s like i think that's what like really is like egging me on to like really really like getting me hyped up if you get what i'm saying because nobody yeah. when east broadtop was a tourist line when it was operating and everything before it got shut down nobody 16 always was the i you know the the dummy if you get what i'm saying like just the one that kind of just was in the background it was there but it never ran like you know it was just yeah. there so to have that one come back to the you know for the revival of it i think is just that complements it even more like you know oh yeah there is another engine that hasn't ran for a long time there and i believe that's the only standard gauge one they own because i believe at one point they did have dual track narrow and standard gauge and that is also a 282. I don't know if they own it or if someone else owns it, but I do know it still exists because I have seen a picture of it before. Okay, I'd have to look into that more. Because I do remember seeing this is the only standard gauge steam locomotive East Broadtop bought, I think it was. Someone can correct me. I, like I said, my knowledge of the East Broadtop isn't what it should be, but I do know that over the course of when they get them running again, you obviously know that I'm going to be more of an East Broad Top fan. <laughs> yes, sir. Their spring schedule for 2021, this like this is how much progression they've made. They've made that much progression that they can release um, a schedule now saying that, hey, we have these events going on. You know, I think they did um, some events in, was it in the summer the last year? Yeah, they did the 60th anniversary. I think one of the weekends I was either chasing 425 or I was chasing 475 when they did the 60th anniversary excursions which was the first public excursions I believe in 10 years where I was done some shoots I believe they offered some fall trains with the diesels and I believe that was all their operations for last year again I've I'm actually kind of embarrassed to admit this as I am the big steam guy I am I really I guess I'm waiting more I mean more than a thousand percent willing to donate more than a thousand percent willing to support them if, if you will if you get what i'm saying but i don't really know too much about the line okay that makes more sense I, I mean i knew of them but just to be like with everything else that was happening over the past few years i never really looked into them and now if they're coming back i mean this would definitely be my second narrow gauge railroad because I don't see myself going to another narrow gauge railroad beforehand I don't know if Huckleberry has any plans to operate this year probably not I don't know um, and probably me going to Durango and Silverton or Coombrays and Toltec this year probably isn't in the cards no So, but I definitely would love to go to East Broadtop I mean that's right here in the east and it's oh, close by <laughs> yeah yeah it's one of, it's probably I would say probably with the top five closest steam locomotive operations to me it's not too far and it's going to be neat there's definitely some shots that I've seen done there in the past that I would love to get when they return and it is one of those things that the hype's building around there I think the hype train will really get there when we see them test firing and doing all those tests and stuff like that Like the, there's progress reports all the time but I think Hype will really begin to build when you see a test fire or a test run. Right. So definitely. And I don't know. 
I know there's – I think there was an estimate put for this year, but, again, like I said, I don't really know. Like, I actually kind of feel embarrassed that I don't know. But it's soon. Yeah, I believe they're – basically from the original, like, uh, press conference that they had, that basically everyone – okay. So when the um, East Broad Top, like – I forget what the foundation or the the organization is called, the but basically the people that bought it back or they bought it from the that family that owned them, okay, owned the railroad. Basically, there was that live stream on Facebook, and like that was when everyone was losing their heads about East Broad Talk because no one, no one thought that that railroad was ever gonna come back, you know, like no one, no one thought it would. And basically, what they explained was they're gonna be you know, taking over, and they're going to be revitalizing the line, and, um, actually, I believe they're going to be rebuilding some of the abandoned parts of the lines that were, and, yes. you know, I, I heard something about, they they plan on rebuilding some of the line that is gone, you know, abandoned. That's why, and you know, and I can't wait to do a photo turn there. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I really can't wait to see it all come together. Oh, yeah, man, I can't wait for it, and, um, it's, this, they slated the return of it for this summer, so hopefully, um, you know, they don't get delayed or, you know, but it, it looks like they're right on the money with the progression they've made. I mean, they, they're they able to run excursions, maybe not long ones, but they're definitely able to, they're capable of it. So once they get the steam locomotives ready, I think they'll be able to definitely um, do some sort of steam excursion, maybe. It's so like you said... I think there was always, it was almost they've always said in a nutshell that if someone came forth and bought the railroad you know trains would probably if they bought the railroad they had a plan and all that other fun stuff there was always the possibility of a return but when people when it actually happened like the hype really built for a little bit and the hype's there I mean there are so many people that are excited it's returning including myself and I know a lot of people have said it really is a place frozen in time, like the Nevada Northern and the Cumbres and Toltec. Because pretty much when the railroad was done, you know, when the railroad closed operations from work and became a passenger, they pretty much had the original engines to the line. How many tourist operations can honestly say they have original engines to their line? Think about it. None of the steam locomotives that operate at Strasburg are original to the Strasburg line. The only engine there that's original is the Plymouth, is the two Plymouths. But like you think about it, how many lines can honestly say they have locomotives that are running at their tourist line that's original? Let's be real, Grand Trunk Western engine in Pennsylvania? To my knowledge, Grand Trunk Western never had any rights there. Cumbres and Toltec, you had those engines always operating on that subdivision. And the Durango and Silverton was the same way. They had engines that were original to those lines, and that's the cool thing about East Broadtop. Those engines were original to that line. They pulled freight duties on that line. Same thing with Nevada Northern. That's what's really so cool about this is, from my understanding, when you go to East Broadtop, it's really frozen in time. Yeah, I I totally agree with you on that part right there. It, it I think that's, like, probably the most fascinating part. You, like, explained it just perfect, is the fact that that railroad is literally historically like accurate to the T. Like that is what it looked like. That is how they operated it. You know what I mean? Well, like I'm sure there's a few. You know, yeah, there may be okay. There <laughs> maybe not a hundred percent, but I'd say ninety five percent of it. So it, it it's a place frozen in time, like you said. It when you go there, those locomotives those actually operated on those lines, you know? Yes. They did. It's not like, oh, we pulled this locomotive um, from this railroad and now it runs here, you know? No, it that is its, that's its original home. Like that's that shop. It that's where it got worked on, and it still gets worked on it in that shop now. You know, it just it's just mind blowing. And like you said, East Broadtop, uh, Cumbres and Toltec, Durango and Silverton, Nevada, and like that's why I want to visit those railroads because it's just that frozen in time feel. You know, more and than you can mine, get at other places or tourist railroads, I guess you could say. A friend of mine was telling me about Nevada Northern that when they abandoned the line, I think it was like 20 years before someone like came back and realized what was there. I don't remember the full story. 
But a friend was telling me they still had, when they were going through there, and they're still going through stuff to this day, apparently, they still had timesheets of the employees that worked at the original Nevada Northern Railroad. That, to me, is actually pretty cool. They had, like, all this stuff. Like, they pretty much picked up and left. I don't know the exact history of the East Broadtop. I don't know if it was abandoned. I know Trains Magazine posted an article about how the Cumbres and Toltec was originally just abandoned by the Rio Grande, the Denver and Rio Grande Western I hope I got the name right. Whatever. The Cumbres and Toltec was abandoned by its original railroad. The East Broadtop, I don't know how long it was abandoned. For some reason, I don't think it was that long from when it ceased from being a freight operation to when it became this world-class passenger operation that everyone remembers it for. But the point is, is it's original, and that's something that's actually pretty cool because not too many lines can claim that. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's... I believe it was... It Wasn't it just, like, a few years? Like, it... Like, they... Re, like, basically, they ceased operations, and then, like, a few years later, it was, like... Or was... It, it may have been re, le, uh, relatively a short period of time when, uh... The... That guy, um... What's... What's their last names? Um... Isn't it... I wish I could help you out there. <laughs> I re What I really say, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know too much about East Broadtop. I think it's I, the... I've heard the name. I've heard it. I just can't think of it. Oh, that. it's um the Kolvachicks, I think. Uh, or what? Yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce that last name correct. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't... I... I just... I, I don't know. It was it operated from 1871 to 1956, and then it got bought in 1960, I believe. Yes. That sounds about right. Yep. So it was it wasn't dormant for long. I mean, yes, a, like a year does a you know a year of abandonment can still do a lot to a railroad. I mean, but at least it was a few years, you know, before not 20 years or you know decades till someone said, oh. You know, but at least it's still here. Same thing with Nevada and Northern, if it was um, dormant it's for Nevada what? Northern, uh, Nevada and Northern. Sorry, Nevada, Northern. Um, if it was dormant for, what, 10 years or more, or however long it was? I think it was about 20, because I know Nevada and Northern, I could, they, they got the RS1 diesels, the Alco diesels that they have out there. And then, I think they were done within 1960, and then I think it was in the 80s that someone went there and they restored 40, I think that sounds about right. Now they're, right now, 81 or 80, God, I wish I could remember the name of the locomotive. It's 81, it's 81, it's being right now restored, and yeah. It's definitely interesting because there is quite a few different tourist operations that have kind of, that are either restoring their steam locomotive after decades or are restoring the locomotive for the first time. Like, we started off this podcast with the Grand Trunk Western Pacific going to Pennsylvania. Yep. Definitely a lot of good stuff happening. Def like, steam and diesel for sure it's good to see that we're seeing a lot of these projects come along for sure like east broad top you know um from the last podcast you know 1309 um reading 2102, 2102. You, you know like it's just it's um amazing and you know we thank everyone that is involved with this stuff thank you for bringing back all this stuff you know i mean it's not an easy task and it's just um you know just super cool to see the progress being made and it's final like the results are finally showing if you get what i mean it's just satisfying you know like yeah. oh they are running excursions on the east broad top now oh 2102 is now officially fired up you know under the first test fire 1309 as well you know it's just cool to see all this stuff and then the stuff that is going to happen in the future for example this grand trunk and western 5030 pacific locomotive that's going to be restored for the Cole Brookdale. That's that's something, you know, like, all oh, this is going to be cool when it comes up, you know. We're going to have that same hype feeling that we have about the projects that are meet, meeting the tipping point to being done. 
with the ones that are just getting started up. Yeah, and it's you know it's just interesting to see, and it's great. It's also as cool as it is seeing some of our favorites. It's definitely nice and refreshing to see new ones. Like Nice Broadtop runs their steam again. I'll be there. Obviously, when 1309 returns, I'll be there. 2102, same thing. 81, I'm just only mentioning that because of the fact we spoke about Nevada Northern. Obviously, that's probably going to be a few years before I make it out that way because of current world situations and all that other right. all that other bad stuff. So. Yeah, there actually uh, something that was talked about the Nevada Northern Railway. They were trying to reacquire a depot or freight house. Um I think it was here let me see if I can find where it was located at it was the East Eli Depot that they were uh, trying to acquire apparently just this was just uh, noted this week that they were trying to acquire um, a freight house there and uh, didn't they um, one of their locomotives just go under if I remember correctly Yes, 40. The official uh, steam locomotive of the state of Nevada. And actually, I wish I would have done the winter. F- yeah, winter. <laughs> winter. God. <laughs> I wish I would have done the winter photo special last year or have done the Trains Magazine photo special with 40. And now I see they're expecting 81 to be back in the fall, but I'm not going to buy tickets because of the fact it's going to obviously include flying and there's no way I can fly this year. I'd love to go and see 81. So I'd love to just go off that line period. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's on my list. I mean, I've seen the I've seen videos of their winter special. It's almost kind of it kind of in a way reminds me of Cass in a way. While we talk about these railroads that were pretty much abandoned. Cass was pretty much abandoned. Yeah, I understand. Yep. And it was a railroad that pretty much turned the town into a tourist operation. Granted, I think there's only one or two locomotives that are original native to the Cass Railroad. Um, Cass does photo charters. While Cass usually does photo charters, they always try to do it different every time they have one, so it's not the same thing. So if you get people who love going there, they try and mix it up every year so you don't do the same charter twice. And from what I understand, Nevada Northern tries to do the same thing with their winter steam spectacular. And I'd love to just go out there once and do it. Yep, same here, man. That Definitely the winter spectacular fo- photo charters looked amazing. I mean, it just, I find those, some, like, some of these railroads, the way they do these photo charters, it just is, it is just awesome and just running in general their stuff is just amazing that's how like some of these railroads just get their names out there so like east broad top they were famous for the way they put on shows and just all the original equipment and all that you know Cass, they're known for all the different whistles they put on their locomotives the shows that they put on with their steam locomotives the amount of different stuff they do with excursions and photo charters i mean it's just crazy to think about all the different stuff you know yeah, and uh, all those are on my bucket list, and hopefully someday, maybe even this year. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, hopefully, definitely, um, 2102, that's looking promising for this year, obviously. That's definitely probably bucket list and happening for me. You know, NRFF, all the foamers are going to go crazy now. <laughs> You can't convince me that somehow we've entered an alternate alternate dimension now that 2102 is leading at our FF. You're right. You're right. Dude, that is facts right there. We're now in an alternate dimension, guys. Since it's 2021 now, we're not no longer in we're 2020. In no, we're not in the original course. We're, we're in 2020-1 now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, then 1309, if they, you know, if that runs in the summer or whenever they get it running, bucket list, definitely going if I can. Trains East Broad. Magazine, I th- think Trains Magazine said in their March issue, which I have a subscriber, said something along the lines of 
spring, summer, I don't remember the article off the top of my head, but they were talking about how they ran the last Baldwin for the first time under its own power in over 50 years, 60 years, I apologize, in over 60 years, and they spoke about how it was late spring, early summer, we could expect to see 1309, which would be cool. Yes, that's going to be cool. It's I, I believe it's due to track work that they have to... Uh, that's why they track can't work test and it. There's a whole list of other projects that they have to still do on the locomotive. That's right. all listed out on the Western Maryland Railroad's uh, website. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, those... But yeah, then if <laughs> if we see any other uh, steam locomotives or any organizations uh, or just tourist railroads uh, run some stuff, obviously I'm going to consider uh, going to those. Um, definitely the QJ6988 for sure if I can get out there and, you know, it runs. And hopefully maybe Great Smoky Mountains or something else, you know, interesting. I would love to... See, that's something I do want to try and I definitely want more of a variety this year for my channel. Um, I'd love to make a return to the Great Smoky Mountains Railroad, and I'd love to go in fall foliage, just peeking down there when you get those beautiful fall colors, which I obviously did not get two years ago. And actually, I would love to shoot more of those scenic lines this year. Cass being on the list, the Durban Rocket. A um, friend of mine, Train Chamber, made a really, really great video of the Durban Rocket, which put it on my bucket list. Um, obviously I want to return to Wilmington and Western, but right now, no one knows how this year is going to go. We're just, yeah, we're kind of just like just... sitting back and kind of seeing how things are going. And, you know, it's kind of early to kind of a little too early to call, um, events. If you get what I'm saying, like, you know what I mean? Like usually we start hearing about stuff in the springtime, you know, March, April ish. That's when stuff starts coming out of the shadows about events going on. Yeah. T typically, for Steam at least. Sometimes you get occasionally stuff earlier, so like February, but most of the time a lot of the events come out in March and April. I believe the Hocking Valley Railroad actually just posted pretty much, not their full schedule, but they posted a schedule enough to say, hey, this is when we're running this year. Great Smoky Mountains does definitely have a date for the return of steam, which was June. Ooh. Yeah, I've just been in more of a... Last year around this time, I was in such a western mood, but now that I realize I'm not going to probably be heading out west anytime soon, I've definitely been thinking more of those scenic lines. Right. And, you know, a lot of tourist railroads right now, as I said in the first episode, could definitely use your support because of these hard times. I mean... I don't know what the factor was for Strasburg running in January, but obviously they lost money too last year. World class, uh, world class operation. I'm not saying that's why they are running, but I mean, I'm not even saying that's why I'm assuming they're running. But I mean, everyone lost money last year. Oh yeah, everyone did. It affected them in some way, you know. So we yeah. definitely recommend if you want to see a lot of this stuff uh, move along quicker, if it if they're restoring something or them return back to normal, you know, operating wise on these tourist railroads preservation groups, uh, we definitely recommend uh, donating donating money to them. You know, it's been tough for them, but we know it's been tough on everyone else. So, you know, just giving y'all the do what you can. Uh, yeah, do what you can. Pick Don't a group you want to? Yeah, pick a group that you really love or you. Yeah, I was going to say they really love. Pick a group that you like, and, you know, if you can, just donate to them. I mean, they could definitely use the money or whatever. Right, right. So. Well, I believe that just about wraps up the topics and everything that we were going to speak about on this uh, episode, too. And poor Gabe has quite a load to edit from this <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes I do but everyone hey we appreciate the support um from episode one I mean I don't uh, well, <laughs> I don't <laughs> I'm just I was kind of blown away a little bit so you know we were just doing this for fun and we thought it would be something a cool concept to try out and it did well for episode one, so we're hoping, 
you know, you guys enjoy this episode and net the more episodes to come, you know? And uh Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun doing these and diesel discussions will be starting up here soon, so just letting you know that a podcast will be starting up and uh I can't thank Christian enough to do these with me or do Steam Smoke Talk with me. I mean it he doesn't have to and he does and I appreciate it. It's just a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And uh can't wait to see what other topics we talk about. Um I mean generally we've been trying to stay within a range, but we never seem to do that. <laughs> well, yeah, we tr- okay. What from what I've noticed with the podcast, it's kind of hard to we we talk about the topics that we were going to talk about, but it's just there's so many different things that you can relate to when it comes to these certain topics, or you want to compare it to something else that we get off, you know, kind of off topic and stuff. But I feel people don't mind that, you know. So it's just what our mind comes to when we think about when we're speaking and that's how it goes in the podcast you know so just expect uh for the viewers that are watching this expect the this podcast i would i would say maybe you know once every couple weeks maybe a few weeks you know not every i don't think we could keep it up every week just because of i'm busy christian yeah christian's busy (laughs) and not only that there's not news every week on steam locomotives you know it's just not it's just not like that every week you know it's here and there so um we'll do our best to keep on top of a lot of the steam preservation restoration and operation going on in the railroad scene but like we said we have our you know our things to do too so just understand that outside of steam yeah there's (laughs) yeah there we have our own lives to you know do stuff and and when we have the time this is when we do these podcasts but we appreciate everyone that supports the channels, you know, both of our channels and the videos that we're producing. So, and plus too, there is something even better than Steam Locomotive that's coming out this year. That's uh, been a long time in the making, and I'm gonna say it here. Even oh boy! Really, whether I say it or not, it's gonna build hype or build hype and support it or not. Obviously, people are gonna support it. It's finally for the first time in oh, 59 years it's actually happening yes Godzilla vs. Kong the remake of the century, decade whatever you want to call it yeah a lot of us have been waiting so. for that I've been waiting for that cause I've been wait- kid I've been waiting for that since I first saw King Kong vs. Godzilla <laughs> yeah you've been waiting longer than I have obviously but I mean and I remember reading that the Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah in 1991 was originally supposed to be the remake, but the copyright owners wanted too much money for it. So it's literally like the big boys returning again for the first time. Right. So this time it's, you know, a giant dinosaur fighting a giant ape. But yeah, I hope you guys definitely enjoyed this. Um, hope you're having a great 2021 so far. Um, so far, I'm doing pretty well for the most part. I think Christian's doing all right for the most part. I don't. Well, are you doing all right? Something like, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this time of year, this is usually cabin. Okay, the only thing I'll say about 2021, this is usually cabin fever time. Obviously, <laughs> I really don't shoot much except modern stuff. But really, two steam train videos in January. Granted, that happened in 2019. You had three. But looks like there's going to be some steam adventures through the spring, depending what happens in the world. Yes, sir. It'll be fun. Hopefully, Christian and I, we are both at the same events. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm gonna. Well, GT Rail fans gonna be signing out here, and I'm sure uh, Christian will be. Christian, you signing out? Yep, I'll sign out too. All right, GT Rail fans signing out. C. Henderson signing out.